Hey, what's up, everyone? Uh, we're going to do a movie review today. We're going to talk about the first Omen, uh, which we'll just go ahead and cut to the chase for those who don't want spoilers. Um, it's fantastic. It is a wonderful film. I feel that it was very much needed in the horror genre. Um, some people would say, why don't we have a new IP? Why are we not getting um, something else, something more up to date, more modern? But for the last Omen film, um, I think came out, it's been at least 20, 30 years. Uh, and this is a 50 year old uh, genre. And the original Omen is a cult classic. It is a horror classic. Uh, it's Academy Mary Award winning for the score by Jerry Goldsmith, who also did Alien soundtrack, of course. Um, and I do think the Omen is his best soundtrack. Um, so, um, and this film stars quite a few people. There's Nell Tiger Free, which is the main character. I think she's also in Game of Thrones. Um, and then you have Bill Nighy, which is, he's fantastic. Ralph uh, Anson, which he's not that big in his role, but his role is very important. And, uh, and he's always great. Um, he was in The Green Knight. Uh, he was the voice of The Green Knight. He was also in The Witch. Um, he was the father in The Witch um, with that voice, you know, his classic, classic voice. Uh, Charles Dance is in it for a minute. And Charles Dance, of course, if you don't know, was Tywin Lannister. Um, but his character in this was really good. It, very short, very short. And I need to watch the movie again because you watch it and you just see what's happening and you're trying to figure out what's going on. But there's also like the context of what they're saying. I feel like I, I need to go back and watch this film again to really absorb all the details to figure out the exact story that they were trying to tell. So of course, um, you know, and there's one, uh, her name's Ishtar Curry Wilson. Um, she is so incredibly creepy. And a lot of people, even though Nell Tiger Free is fantastic in it, this Ishtar, uh, her name, she's playing Angelica, and her character is so, her responses are so incredible. She's, she acts crazy and deranged, um, and they have her just, you know, okay, so you have our main character, and she's going to Rome. She's a nun. She's uh, very pure, very positive. She's been brought up a Christian in the faith, and uh, she's going to an orphanage in Rome, uh, advised by her, by her teacher and mentor who's a priest uh, who's Bill Nighy's character and uh, so she's going to Rome and she's innocent she's got the sweetness about her very cute she loves children you can see she's got something there but the moment she arrives in this orphanage uh, shit's going down you know she starts getting visions of some crazy stuff and um, uh, very disturbing imagery and whatnot. And then, of course, she interacts with Ishtar Curry, which is very weird. There's a young girl that's uh, called Carlita, who's actually very good. And she reminded me of the little girl from The Ring. Um, it's Nicole Soros. Um, anyway, so they had... Um, and, of course, this one woman who I really liked, she was actually the head nun. Um, she did a great job at being um, cold, very cold. Um, and her name's uh, Sylvia, her character, but it was Sonia Braga, uh, or Sonia Braga. Anyway, she's Italian, of course. So, okay, um, and this nun goes there. She's innocent, she's sweet. She's going to spread the word of Christ and help children. And as it's going on, you start to realize there's something not right with this. Now, there's a couple of films that are like this. There's Rosemary's Baby. There's The Exorcist, of course, 1973. There is, uh, and then the original Omen, uh, which is fantastic. But there's another film that a lot of people don't talk about in this genre that I believe is a very underrated film, and it's The Devil's Advocate. Uh, Charlize Theron, um, Al Pacino, um, Keanu Reeves. I feel that movie also taps into the, the most messed up, and, and, and they're actually, they're trying to bring forth uh, the, uh, the Antichrist. And so in this film, um, I found there's a scene that happens, and I'm sure if you've read any reviews or watched anything, and we're going to have spoilers from here on out, uh, for those of you, uh, who are worried about that. There's a scene in the beginning of this film where, um, a birthing scene, and our character has been going through it. She's seeing things. She's just like, what am I seeing in this place that's so disturbing? She's seeing image, imagery that's messed up, a little girl that's messed up, um, all sorts of little creepy things. But there's a birthing scene, and they birth a lot because a lot of these people, it's like an orphanage. These girls come in. They've been impregnated. So they give birth, and they, they, they um, help them out or get them into the, you know, it's an orphanage. 
So anyway, um, she comes and she sees a breathtaking place. And it's that character that I was talking about that I just think she is so um, unsung in this film and so creepy. And um, she's giving birth. And of course, it seems normal, but she's freaking out. And it's very horrific. And they have to give her gas. And if you've heard about the reviews of this movie, um, this this scene was supposed to be even more than what you get, which is crazy. I can't believe they. I don't even know what else they could possibly be uh, more. Um, but they had to go to the review board like five times to get this film, uh, not an NC-17. Um, I really hope it's on an uh, uncut version on uh, for, uh, 4K. Um, but yeah, so, um, she sees this birthing scene and we'll say, I can't believe they even put it on film. It is a full blown frontal and sh this woman giving birth, this character is having, uh, it seems like immense pain. She's freaking out. Um, they give her gas and so then she gets high and she just starts laughing and she's, you, s you know, it's very disturbing. Um, and we'll just say, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about <laughs> just by doing this. But something comes out of her and you see it all like it looks real, like a real birthing scene. And it is a demon claw and it comes out and it's like so crazy looking visually. It's, it's in my head. It's been in my head. So um, very, very well done. And of course, that sets the tone for the film of like what is going on in this place. And then there's always the investigation that's happening. And um, our character starts to find out there's more and more. And it's. You know, and you start to find out that there's this... So the whole plot of this film revolves around the fact that the church... Less people are going to church, which is inevitable. Less people will start going, less believers and whatnot. And so the church believes that they need to use fear as a tool, which they've always done. I mean, that's what church is. They use fears uh, to control others and control people. And so they want to bring forth authentic fear. So they bring forth, they're trying to bring forth the Antichrist because they believe that if you have the Antichrist and they think they can control him and they have him, they can show people, look at this demonic presence. And so, uh, of course, the church's ego is going to bring forth this demonic presence. But the way they go about it, because I've seen a lot of reviews say, why do we need this? We've got the omen. It's great. We don't need a backstory. And I'm like, I don't know. Because in the original omen, you just have this baby. And it's mixed up. And then by the end of the film, you start to realize that our characters that have adopted this child adopted, you know, the Antichrist instead. And you watch their... The thing that made that first film so good is watching parents have to hate their child. And after loving on him as a baby and thinking he's incredible and he's the best, to turn into a killer. I mean, the child tries to kill the mother. The You know, he's the Antichrist. So uh, he's evil. And um, so when you watch that in that film, that's what makes it so difficult. This film is the backstory of like how they brought the Antichrist to Earth. And I find that a worthy story. I think that is a worthy story. And of course, you're going to have the ties at the end. The music is fantastic. Jerry Goldsmith did the original soundtrack, uh, which won an Academy Award for Best Score in that year, which well does, I think it's his best soundtrack ever. The second film has a fantastic soundtrack as well, but the film is not as good as the original. So in uh, the first Omen, we have, um, his name's Kevin, oh, I forgot his last name. He did um, the soundtrack to... Um, um, a lot of Robert Eckers films and um, such as The Witch which I feel like this film really amps up it feels like The Witch Part 2 it's a lot of that chanting a lot of the whispers a lot of the, the evil that's in the score is and I've listened to it all day today this is the day after and I've been going over it and going over it I'm like this score is incredible it's so well done. The sounds, there's a song called The Lo uh, the Noose Titans, and I think that's the one they used during the pregnancy scene, and it was just so unnerving. And there's this ticking and this clicking. Anyway, it's fantastic. Um, so soundtrack's wonderful. And by the, end, by the time you get to the end of this movie, some people said the third act was a bit weak, and I don't understand how they could see it as a bit weak because you find out a big uh, plot twist that you may have seen coming anyway, but you see it for what it is, but you get to watch our characters unravel as this information comes out you get these evil nuns which reminded me of rosemary's baby with all the satanists you know 
bringing forth the Antichrist, Hail Satan, you know, uh, all of that, classic films, classic films. So, um, and even in uh, The Devil's Advocate, they do the same thing. In The Devil's Advocate, they talk about how, um, I think it's Al Pacino um, discussing bringing him forth. Oh, no, it's the followers. They're like, oh, he's blessed. I think there's a woman standing outside in the street talking to Keanu Reeves, saying, oh, he's waiting for you. You know, It's always this the characters that just think Satan's so beautiful and so wonderful and so great. Those characters are the most disturbing to me. They freak me out. Uh, so I recommend this film. I think this director, she has done such a good, great job at bringing a 50-year-old IP and not going over the top with it, not going like a modern film where like, oh my God, gore and shock and crazy stuff, demons running on the ceiling, you know, shit like that. It's a slow, very realistic. This is what it would be like if, if there was a satanic church cult that was trying to bring forth the Antichrist with a bunch of nuns, this would be it. And it's amazing. It's incredible. I, uh, I can't wait to see it again. I'll get it on 4K and I'll study it and analyze some of those shots. And I hope we have an underrated version so we can see all the stuff that the director wanted us to see because it's wild. And there's multiple births in this film. Um, but that first one in the film is so unnerving because it looks so real. And on a $30 million budget, you can see it all on screen. It looks expensive. It looks like every shot is well thought out. I will say... Uh, this director is only going to get so much better because I could tell while watching it that um, it's someone who's just about to stretch their legs. It's like they're getting a feel of the film. They're um, this, You could see they're just like so they're very passionate, but they're trying to pull themselves back slightly and make sure everything's just right because this is the moment that she's going to put her name into film. Because, I mean, Denis Villeneuve did that. Now look at him with Dune. Now everybody's like, you know, loves Denis. And um, so, yeah, I think this director is going to go quite far. Robert Eggers is another one. He's, uh, But he seems to still be staying in that indie genre. Uh, he's almost deliberately trying to stay right there. Now, I'm curious about his Nosferatu movie that's going to come out later this year. I'm very curious about it. Um, see what he has to bring forth with Nosferatu because his movie, The Witch, uh, uh, Dust Thou Wants to Lift Deliciously, and, um, and then The Lighthouse, of course. Uh, <laughs> the lobster scene or the seagull scene, my God. So, yeah, Robert Eggers, this chick... Uh, all these little indie directors are doing so well. Um, and I think that's what we need right now. I didn't even bother to go see the new Kong Kong Kingdom, whatever it is, Godzilla Kong Kingdom. After Godzilla Minus One and how phenomenal it is in writing and character development. It's another one. It's the same thing. This film and um, Minus One and Robert Eggers and um, all of these small, so well thought out, well shot um, art forms for that pull themselves back instead of just going overboard and nuts. This is the new genre of film, and I will say it's wonderful to watch unfold. Um, I'm very excited for the future of film. I wish I was in it. I wish I was doing it. I wish I was directing. I wish I was uh, creating like that visually. If I had millions of dollars, I'd be going straight to film school. That's what I'd be doing. I'd just be sitting there and studying and studying, and I would be great at it. Anyway, um, I wish y'all the best. Hail Satan. <laughs> so go check this movie out while it's in theaters. I appreciate the view. Subscribe.